Welcome to the MaxTech Podcast. Today I have Roger Leerhofer from Pantech Systems in Switzerland with me. And we're going to discuss about hot foiling and embossing using the Pantech Rhino. So, Roger, welcome to Australia. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks. It's always a pleasure to be here. Good to hear. Good to hear. And we've put on some good weather for you. So I love Australia anyway. So good. So we've got no fires. We're out over the cyclones. The floods are going down. Yes. So I can assure you you're going to be safe for the next week. Good. Very good. So, so Roger, um, MaxTech has been representing Pantech for a few years now and uh, promoting the Pantech Rhino embossing and hot pouring system. And that product has grown over the last few years and grown in capabilities and also efficiencies. But today I'd like to start off by talking about where hot foiling and embossing really plays a part. We all know about hot foiling and embossing in, uh, in the wine label industry yes. um, and it's quite common there. Um, but um, we'd like to talk about what the advantages are of hot foiling over other types of foiling systems and certainly embossing and hot embossing over other types of embossing systems. So let's start with um, the, the, the wine labels, for instance. Um, many of our customers um, would like to be able to uh, print over an embossed label, but they've always been told that this can't be done. What's the case with paint? Yes, we have a lot of customers, mainly in, uh, in France, but I don't know exactly how they do it in Australia. So just to inform, we have three machines in, uh, in Australia, and we have two of our flatbed mold foil systems in New Zealand. And they are doing wine labels, mainly wine labels. And I don't know, in New Zealand, maybe they do honey, honey labels as well. But uh, anyway, we have a lot of machines in France. And they have a uh, lot of uh, offset machines as well, semi-offset offset machines like Gauss TCS, for example, or also new P2, MO4. Anyway, we have very often, I would say, 90% of our integrations are between the colors. I mean, they do uh, stamping, then they do hot foiling, they do hot foiling and the embossing together. No, maybe it could be a single stroke design, multi stroke design, multi color design, and then they very often overprint it another, with another color or with, at least with a varnish to protect the foiling. And this can be done also over the embossed area. So I've, I've so always been led to believe or, or uh, have been told that when you overprint even flexo mm -hmm. and even worst case, would be offset because of the high pressure the offset yes. uses, that you immediately flatten the embossed area and it doesn't recover. But this is not the case, is it? No, it is not the case because the Rhino has a, a very high uh, embossing pressure mm -hmm. and we have also a very high dwell time, means a high contact time. Mm -hmm. So just to explain the, the, the table so for the tooling mm -hmm. is coming up, and remains a couple of uh, fractions, let's say fraction of a second, and then goes down again. So it's not just up and down, it's up and remains, contact time, dwell time, then goes back. And then we have the third factor is the temperature. Mm -hmm. So with temperature, pressure, and uh, dwell time, we are able to literally change the structure of the paper. So the fibers in the paper are uh, shaped or, or changed. So uh, the embossed area, the relief, got like a, a memory effect. Mm -hmm. so, so you can, even if you flatten it down, it comes back. Okay. And so the dwell time is the critical component of this? Uh, not only. Dwell time, temperature and pressure. Okay. So the paper is structurally changed so that it has this memory so if you yes. go, once you go through another print station, be it flexo or be it offset, that just rebounds and we can go through. I guess the other point about it is that in most situations, you're also going to go through a die-cut station. 
and a die cut station is going to want to flatten the uh, the embossing. Yes, exactly. So, um, um, so I can see the logic behind you know, this being able to rebound. Otherwise, when something goes through a die cut station, it's, it's going to be flattened anyway. Yeah. So, um, no, that's that's really interesting. So, and uh, and with the obviously with the hot foil, the significant advantage of the hot foil is that. Uh, you can hot foil pretty well any surface. So rough paper stocks, open exactly. face stocks, um, coated stocks, even plastic film I understand you can you can you can emboss. No, sorry, yes. you can uh, cold hot foil. Yes. So you're right. So mainly the main advantage of flatbed systems is that you can emboss and boil every kind of substrate. Mm -hmm. uh, uncoated paper Mainly in the wine industry, they use uncoated paper. There is absolutely no uh, problem. Mm -hmm. But also coated paper and, as you mentioned, plastic is our newest uh, application for you. Okay. So we are aiming flexible packaging. Yep. So you can see, for example, this is a PET laminate. Oh, yeah. And you can even see, oh, yeah, you can see the embossing cap there. Yeah. So this particular customer is looking for brand protection. Mm -hmm. So they are facing problems with counterfeiting. Mm -hmm. This is a quite a value, uh, high value product. So in this case, it's a spice mix. So they are looking for uh, protecting it. Mm -hmm. um, so we did some tests for them mm -hmm. and uh, showed up that it's absolutely uh, Feasible to go through a hot foil flatbed system with a plastic laminate. That's amazing. So it's not shrinking, it's not uh, moving, not and it doesn't strike through, and you don't get any holes or anything like that. No. no. And I noticed that this film is a uh, what is it? A, a metallized laminate? Yeah, it's a laminate it's film. It's a three-layer laminate. Mm -hmm. It's a, a PET. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The middle layer is PET metallized, mm -hmm. and the layer where the food is or the spice is is PET. Polyethylene, yes. which has got you know, a very low melt index, and so probably would melt at 70 or 80 degrees, but this seems to be fine. Yeah, together is the PET mm -hmm. laminated form. It's, uh, wow. That's working. That's amazing. I can see some brand owners of flexible packaging getting very excited about this. Yeah, it's not only for brand protection, but it's also for Enhance. brand enhancement. Absolutely. For example, Absolutely. here we could think about uh, do multi multicolor foil embossing of this cock here. So yes. this could be a possibility yes. to attract the customer to buy rather this product than maybe the other one on the shelf. Um, and and this could be done offline or online. Yeah, it could be done inline and offline. Okay. Well, depending the the speed, the and, and what about the resi if you do that offline? Obviously, you're foiling onto the surface of the product. So, what about resistance to rub and damage in that in that way? Sort of through normal packaging. Like I can see that this has been quite a new sample, yeah. and nothing is coming off. So the adhesion of the of the foil is is, is very strong to the to laminate. Yeah, it seems. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Very interesting. Okay, each each brand owner finally has to do uh, his own tests or yes. whatever he wants. Maybe I don't know. He has to check the barrier, uh, the capabilities of the, the layer, or whatever. And I also see there's some micro embossing in here as well. Yeah, this is uh, one of the possible okay. features, which is excellent. Excellent. Possible with the Rhino. Or for example, here this is a metallized paper. But this is nothing to do with plastic. This mm. is metallized paper. This is used for for all kind of packaging. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it's, it's this chewing tobacco from India. Um, and here's the same. Very good for release. And this is also for enhancement and brand protection. So do you see that this uh, enhancement of this type of packaging, this is food packaging and flexible packaging. Do you see that as a, a growing area of the business? For yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Especially in countries where 
counterfeiting is a big subject, mm -hmm. like China, India, mm -hmm. also a little bit Indonesia, mm -hmm. uh, Vietnam, you're uh, having good projects. Okay. Um, here in Australia, we just started to talk to some customers, but now, um, yeah, we have to see whether we can develop this market. Yeah. Excellent. And so just to go back to um, uh, flatbed uh, embossing and pulling, obviously we've heard some of the advantages of flatbed embossing in terms of being able to recover the relief or to, to, to maintain the relief. Yeah. Um, but what are the other, some of the other branches of flatbed uh, embossing and foiling over more conventional, which is more sort of rotary like foil? Yeah, one of the big advantages is the, the, the multi stroke design, uh, which we can do. Yeah. This is more like this one. Yes, for example, this is a five stroke design, so mm -hmm. the label goes through, the, through our flatbed rhino and we uh, uh, apply five different features. And then uh, the label is decorated, is finished, so that it doesn't have to go five times through the through the decoration process. Yeah. Yeah. So with a rotary system, it wouldn't be possible to do that in one single pass. So I can see in this sample that you've got grain for yes. background enhancement to, to the actual stock itself. You've got micro embossing. Um, you've got debossing, embossing. Okay. As well as uh, what one, two, three, four different foils. Yes. So, um, so yeah. So this is all done as a single pass using a multi-stroke function of the pamphlet. Exactly. And how, how many strokes can we get in a single pass on a pamphlet? Yeah, it depends the stamping area of the flatbed uh, system. So we have different uh, different sizes of mm -hmm. machines. So in this particular case. Uh, Depends mainly the, the width of the, of the, the stamping the label, width, yeah, or the repeat size. Yeah. So if we have a label, maybe let's say this one, which has uh, about a hundred millimeters, hundred millimeters, it's yeah. possible to make four strokes. Okay. This makes maybe eighty millimeters. It's possible to go for five strokes. Okay. So, so it's really about the number of strokes you want to do within the available area of the stamping area itself. Yes. So okay. yes. Yeah. So we have smaller machines. I can show you another sample, which is this one. It's also very beautiful. So this also is at around 120 millimeters. We do it in three strokes. We yeah. have a transparent uh, foil. Yes. We do at the same time graining here over the sea, over the sailing. We have uh, foil embossing of this gold. And this is three dimensional as well. This yeah. is three dimensional, yes. yes. Even with some uh, micro embossing. On the, on the characters, yes. Then the third stroke, which is very beautiful, uh, is the hologram. Mm -hmm. So we put uh, this lens mm -hmm. over the moon here and over the compass. Yeah. So this makes this loop effect. Yes, it does. But this is a, a registered single image hologram mm -hmm. foil. Okay. This can be handled by our flatbed system as well. This is also a, a USP of our machine. As we know, there is no other flatbed system in the market which can handle single image oh, okay. holograms. Oh, okay. So this is uh, for example with three strokes in our high, uh, uh, high I would say uh, high frequency machine yes. with the Rhino S510 yes. or 410 we can run it around 60 meters per minute using three strokes using three strokes. It's well, that's, that's that's right. Right. The it's maximum really frequency 30,000 strokes per hour, which mm -hmm. makes around 8.3 strokes per second. Mm -hmm. So it's 8.3 times per second. Wow, it's running very fast. That's running very fast. Yeah. yeah. And so if you're doing a single image, so the full length of that guy area, you'd be approaching speeds of 150 meters a minute. Yes. That's very fast. Uh, Yes, exactly. For example, if we have just one, this is just one foiling mm -hmm. and a little bit embossing, but we could, could do that in one, in one stroke. So there is no multi stroke or multi uh, color effects on this. So we could imagine to have even uh, three times the same two. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can uh, make 
12 of these images. Well, one, 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 yeah. so and then maximize the Then we have maxima, maximum substrate advance, mm. so we can reach the maximum speed of the machine, which is 150 mm. meters per minute. That's very fast. Good and very so just, just talking about tooling, um, obviously uh, we're now using a flat tool. So uh, as I understand, you can have that in magnesium, you can have it in brass, yes. copper. Um, so how does that compare to rotary tool in terms of cost? Is there uh, some yeah, that's a huge issue? difference? So rotary tooling is uh, normally, I would say, five to eight times more expensive. Wow, that's a huge difference. Yeah, than flat bed. Mm -hmm. And but the main advantage of flat bed, obviously, is the capability to do a high radius embossing. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so, so for example, to come back on this sample, this is really a high radius. Yes, it is. You wouldn't be able to do that rotary. Because just to visualize, if you have something rotary, so you make the embossing like this, maybe female. So at a certain point, you, you, you start to, to uh, cut the substrate. Yes. Yes. But with the, with the flat bed embossing, you, you just you are not limited, let's say. So, uh, so with, with, with rotary, it, it's it's more like two gears coming together, isn't it? Exactly. So you need to have a space for those gears to be able to move in and out of each other, which is going to give you more rounded shoulders nice. on your on your embossing, yes. rather than a nice sharp square profile or sharp profile. You're going to get more of a rounded profile. Yes, and you are limited in the height. Yeah. Of because course, of, of cutting of the paper. Yeah. Yeah. And so I can also see that um, because you're in, in a rotary mode with tooling, that the dwell time is going to be a, a, a factor of the press speed. Yes. So um, the, the, the faster that press wants to run, the less dwell time you're going to have. And so the more opportunity there is for kickoff uh, and for poor quality foiling. Whereas with the Rhino, the speed is is essentially constant. The dwell time is absolutely constant. No, it's also also a uh, let's say uh, depends the frequency. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. Okay. So, so the dwell time can be even on a flat bed. System. Yeah, but in uh, comparison to rotary, it's still I don't know factor eight, I think, or ten uh, higher. Okay. So anyway. So rotary is very exact, very fast. Yep. So you don't have this dwell time, you don't have the advantage of it, what I, what I explained mm. before. That you have this structure changing in the paper. Yep. So I guess then, yeah, if we if we summarize those points, then so that with the flatbed, you've got high speed up to 150 meters a minute, depending on the pull length that you yes. you're calling on. Yeah. Um, you can run multiple streams in the same tool and so you get multiple strokes across that and produce three, four, five different effects, including embossing, debossing, boiling, um, across the single tool. Yeah. Um, your tool cost is a factor of five to eight times lower than rotary tooling. Exactly. You get sharper embossing um, and with sharper images and a deeper emboss using flatbed tool. Um, is there anything else? Is there something else that I've missed? Yeah, if you want to do the business case properly, we have to consider also the foil cost. Ah, so yes. The foil cost normally for flatbed is, is lower than for a rotary. Yes. For rotary. This is the cost of buying the actual foil itself, more foil material itself. Yeah, the foil itself. We, they call it fast release foil. Yeah. So, because of the rotary contact time is very short, mm -hmm. they, they need a, the activation of the glue. It's, it's, yeah, it needs to be quicker. Yes. Yeah. And so, they call it fast release. Yeah. And this foil normally is, I don't know, around 30% more expensive than flatbed foil. Mm -hmm. But there we have more time, mm -hmm. thanks to the dwell time. Mm -hmm. To release, to activate the glue. Okay, release it. Yep. And so this uh, makes a lot of money mm -hmm. if you calculate it properly. Mm -hmm. Another advantage is so called uh, paper graining. Mm -hmm. 
So we can, for example, as you explained here, so there is a there is a region in the paper which has been grained. Mm. It's just giving a structure. Mm -hmm. So, especially in the wine labels, you can even buy already grained paper, mm. structured paper, which is very expensive. Mm. Or you can grain the paper with the rhino. And so can you grain the entire area of yes. the label? Yes. Yes. Oh. So, no, I, I, so you can use cheap. You can buy cheap substrate, yes. grain it by yourself with the machine, mm -hmm. and sell it then uh, as a premium product. As a premium product. As a premium product. Mm -hmm. That is another advantage. I guess the other thing about the the foil, uh, the hot, the Pantex system, I should say, is is the foil saving aspect. So um, depending on the design, of course, um, you can actually set it up so that you you're maximizing the use of your foil and not wasting any. And you can run a stream. So, what is the narrowest stream of foil you can run? What's the narrowest? So the narrowest is uh, 15 millimeters. Oh, okay. So, on a rotary hot foil system, you wouldn't be able to achieve that. Again. No, normally rotary. All customers I see, they use the wide roll. Just they put the wide roll on it, maybe two or three streams, but maximum three streams uh, across the web. So they have already a lot of foil waste yeah. between the between the foil images to be stamped on the label, mm -hmm. and then normally they don't have to they don't have the possibility to save between the, the gaps. I've, I've so seen figures of up to eighty percent saving on foil yeah, by using a flatbed system. Mm -hmm. So even if we average that out and said that a customer is going to save forty percent of their foil. Uh, that would, that's a massive saving just on four alone. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So our, our calculation shows that can go up to, I don't know, 50 to 80,000 euros per, per year. Goodness me. That's so a huge thing. If you're actually doing a lot of foil, particularly in the, the wine label industry, I imagine that, yeah, there are yeah, so many yeah. labels that are foiled. You know, we have special, our foil head is designed to uh, use narrow foils already. This is a good thing to uh, save between the streams. And then we have two, uh, let's say, two foil levels, mm -hmm. foil saving right. headings. Mm -hmm. So we can uh, program differently uh, the foil advance yes. according to the design of the label. And this also uh, uh, saves a lot of foil. It's interesting. Yeah. So our machines are high productivity, high efficiency as well. As high quality. And high quality. Yeah. Of course. They're from Switzerland. Yeah. Nothing comes out of Switzerland that's not high quality. <laughs> <laughs> Roger Pedigree Peter comes from Switzerland. He's yeah. good at option. Uh, well, yeah. thank you, Roger. Um, that's, that's really interesting. Thank you for um, filling us in on the advantages of flatbed hot falling and. Uh, and uh, Thanks. Uh, and embossing the opportunity to speak with you. Right. All right. Thank you very much.